Good morning and welcome you all to this session of uh, fluid machines. Now, in the last class, we derived this expression that this H represents that head or the energy per unit weight that is being delivered by the fluid to the rotor is given by this expression. And the nomenclature again I repeat that V w 1 and V w 2 are the tangential component of fluid velocities at inlet and outlet of the rotor respectively and u 1, u 2 are the linear velocities of the rotor at inlet and outlet. Now, as I have told that rotor consists of a number of blades, moving blades, moving rows of blades, more rows of blades and each rows have number of blades which constitutes number of blade passages. So, therefore, here we will show a typical section of a rotor with blades. Now, the blade is shown like this with a broken path to show the inlet and outlet portion. So, we will concentrate our attention at the inlet and outlet. Now, here what we will do the velocity of the fluid at both inlet and outlet will be will be uh, shown with a vector diagram. Now, what is that at the inlet if we show the vector diagram which is known as velocity triangle you see that V 1 is the fluid velocity absolute velocity of the fluid. Now, U 1 is the linear velocity of the blade which is tangential at this point tangential means which is perpendicular to the radial direction. So, this is a vector diagram where this is V r 1 is the relative velocity of the fluid with respect to the blade at this point at the point of inlet. That means, one can write one can show that V r 1 the relative velocity is V 1 minus u 1. That means, this is the absolute velocity of the fluid and this is the velocity this u 1 is the direction of the velocity blade velocity here which is u 1 and if we draw it in scales then if we complete this triangle this will be the direction of the relative velocity that is the velocity with which fluid is entering the rotor blade or entering the rotor blade at the at the inlet of the rotor blade with respect to the rotor. That means, this is the velocity with respect to the rotor. To show this relative velocity, we draw this velocity triangle which is the velocity vector or vector triangle. So, here also vector diagram V 2 is the absolute velocity of the fluid and you see that V 2 is the absolute velocity. Here also if we write V r 2 that is the relative velocity of the fluid at the outlet of the blade with respect to the blade will be nothing but its absolute velocity minus the blade velocity. And blade velocity will be having in the tangential direction that is omega r 2 this is this one. So, if this is the blade velocity and this is the outlet velocity if you complete this vector triangle. So, this will be V r 2. Okay. So, this way we will always draw the velocity triangle which is the vector triangle. Always we will write this and this is one way simple to understand if you take u 2 here v r 2 plus u 2 will be v 2. You see in the triangle v r 2 plus u 2 here you see this v r 2 this is u 2 that means u 2 v r 2 is in the same direction if they are added we get v 2 in the opposite direction as the resultant velocity. That way you can understand this vector triangle. Here also v r 1 plus u 1 is v 1. So, if you take this one in this case also you see this is v r 1 and this is u 1. So, u 1 added with v r 1 in the same direction gives the value of v 1 which is in the opposite direction this is v 1. This way one can understand the vector diagram at the first level which is known as velocity triangle. Now, if we write this from the velocity triangle we do a trigonometric things. What is this? If we denote this alpha 1 as the angle made by the absolute velocity with the tangential direction. This is the tangential direction that direction along with the blade 
speed is the direction of the blade speed this is the tangential direction and beta 1 is the angle made by the relative velocity with the tangential direction at inlet. Similarly, alpha 2 is the angle made by the absolute velocity at the outlet with the tangential direction and beta 2 is the angle made by the relative velocity at the outlet with the tangential direction. Now, let us uh, write here for the inlet one you see we get we can write with this triangle V r 1 square taking this triangle into consideration trigonometric relation V 1 square that means square of two sides plus u 1 square and this angle is acute minus twice u 1 this is u 1 into the perpendicular length that is V 1 the projection of V 1 on U 1 V 1 cos alpha 1 V r 1 square is equal to V 1 square plus U 1 square minus twice U 1 into V 1 cos alpha 1. This can be written as V r 1 square is equal to V 1 square plus U 1 square minus twice u 1 and this v 1 cos alpha it is given here this projection of v 1 that is a component of v 1 in the tangential direction that is nothing but our tangential component of absolute velocity of the fluid at inlet which already we define twice u 1 v 1 or one can write twice u 1 v w 1 is equal to v 1 square plus u 1 square minus v r 1 square. Okay. Now, the similar way if you write it here at the outlet we will get what we will get v r 2 square that means the square of this side is equal to square of this side plus square of this side that means v 2 square plus u 2 square plus u 2 square minus twice u 2 this is u 2 into v 2 cos alpha 2 minus u 2 twice u 2 into v 2 cos alpha 2. Well, and this v 2 cos alpha 2 again is v w 2 see this is v w 2 that means the tangential component of velocity absolute velocity of the fluid at outlet. So, one can also write here twice here twice u 1 v w 1 twice u 2 v w 2 equals to v 2 square plus u 2 square minus v r 2 square. Well, now if we subtract this one from this, we get a very important relation. What is this? This one is like this that we can write V w 1 in this way u 1 minus V w 2. 2 u 2 by g which we already know as e the energy per unit mass given by the fluid now can be written from these two expressions this one okay, and this one these two expressions as v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 g from these two expressions. Now, I am writing plus u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2 g plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square by 2 g. 
So, what I have done now, this expression was proved earlier, deduced earlier, not proved, deduced earlier as the energy per unit mass that is being delivered by the fluid to the rotor, which can be splitted into three components like this with the help of the trigonometric relations of the velocity triangles at inlet and outlet. Velocity triangles at inlet and outlet are nothing but the velocity vector diagram at the inlet and outlet with the help of the simple trigonometric relations we have got this. Now, here absolutely we see one thing is apparent that the net energy exchange or the net energy delivered by the fluid depends I, I have got three components. One is the change in its kinetic energy. This is purely change in its kinetic energy, change in the absolute velocity. And this part, so this is known as the change in dynamic head, change in kinetic or dynamic head. Head is again the energy per unit mass. This is known as change in dynamic head. And these two parts corresponds to the change in pressure. Head. Change in pressure head or it is known as static head. This is a loose term the pressure head actually these two things are responsible for change in the fluid pressure and in a very strict sense they represent the change in the flow work of the fluid which loosely sometimes we tell the pressure head the pressure energy per unit mass which is manifested in terms of the change in the pressure. So, therefore, when the fluid delivers energy, its dynamic it changes, it changes its kinetic energy at the same time it changes its pressure. Pressure is also reduced. Kinetic energy is reduced, this part is positive, V 1 is greater than V 2 and this part is also positive. So, that the change in the pressure stat, pressure rate or static rate is, is such that the fluid, redu, fluid releases the pressure. Again in the other way, when the fluid gains them, this is negative. That means, when the fluid gains energy, fluid gains energy in the form of its dynamic head and also in the form of its pressure, pressure or static head. Now, an understanding for a physical understanding that how does it work as a change in the pressure head, we can think a simple system like this. Consider how a fluid when it gets displaced in the field of a rotation that means, when there is a tangential velocity of the fluid which is imparted by the rotating rotor, then if a fluid changes its position from one radial location to other radial location, how the pressure changes is being determined by this quantity. This can be explained very simply probably you people know at this point that let us consider a container like that which is filled with fluid and which this container is rotated with an angular velocity in this vertical plane about a horizontal axis. This way the container is being rotated. So, in with this rotation let us consider the fluid has a slow motion in the radial direction. Fluid moves radially from one radial location fluid moves to other radial location. This is the central point that means, this is the axis of rotation. From the axis of rotation, fluid changes its radial position from one position to another. So, in that case, if we consider a fluid mass like this, a simple fluid mass, a small elemental fluid mass, let us show it here an elemental fluid mass like this. And here, in this case, what happens when the fluid moves with a tangential velocity here, because of the rotation of this with an angular speed omega of this container, what happens? The fluid has a centrifugal force and centripetal force. That means, any fluid mass is being balanced at a location by virtue of both the forces. One is centrifugal force, which is away from this in the radial direction, away from the central axis and another is the centripetal force, which is inward radial force. And this inward radial force and the centripetal force and the outward radial force, the centrifugal force both of them balance each other to make the fluid in position to rotate. Not it is neither going out or neither coming in. It slowly moves in the radial direction the way it has to be moved along the according to the flow field. So, this centripetal force 
cause it causes a radial pressure field here that means a radial pressure field is generated so this radial pressure field actually exerts a pressure force on this fluid element in the radial direction if we understand this in a very simple case you will see that if we consider this as the r direction now let us consider the pressure here at p and let if we think that this is a small radial length or height dr then the pressure here can be written as p plus del p del r del r by neglecting the higher order terms in a taylor series expansion and if we consider the cross sectional area this area as da then we can write the centrifugal force equals to the centripetal force which is nothing but the pressure force in this fluid element now what is the centrifugal force so centrifugal force is rho times the volume that is mass da into delta r that is the volume of the fluid element into density mass into v theta if the this is the tangential component of velocity of the fluid v theta square by r this equals to the centripetal force that is the inward radial force fr this fr is what this fr is given by inward radial force which is p plus del p del r del r into da minus from this side p into d this becomes equal to del p del r del r d a now if you put f r there d a del r d a del r cancels we simply get an expression that del p del r is rho v theta square by r so you see this rotational velocity is responsible for a radial pressure gradient to be set in here radial pressure field rather radial pressure field or radial pressure gradient to be filled in here so that from one point to other point there is a change in the pressure and that that's why the fluid changes its pressure if it moves from one radial point to another radial point now the same thing you can get if you if you write the navier stokes equation in general in a cylindrical coordinate system in r direction if you recall the navier stokes equation in a cylindrical uh, polar coordinate system you will see in r direction the navier stokes equation is like that this is for your knowledge for your information i am telling you provided probably you know these things this is the navier stokes equation in the left hand side the inertial term this is the dvr dt the substantial derivative change of radial velocity with t this is the radial acceleration minus v theta square by r equals to minus del p del r plus mu into it is the laplacian i am not writing this thing in full i am not repeating this this you will get from any fluid mechanics course minus v r by r square minus 2 by r square del v theta del now here i will tell you that while deducing this expression what we first did we considered that radial flow is so small or radial acceleration is so small that this is neglected because whenever we write that the centrifugal force is equal to this centripetal force that means this is the mass times v theta square by r it is the only centrifugal acceleration okay and this is equal to the net inward radial pressure force so here we neglect the radial acceleration and at the same time we neglect any viscous force acting on this element that means if we neglect the viscous force the entire thing zero and if we neglect the radial acceleration you get the same thing that del p del r is rho v theta square by r okay now here if you consider the rotation of this container if you consider v theta as omega r 
then you can write del p del r is equal to rho omega square r square that means omega square r. So, if you integrate this del p del r d r and here we consider p as a function of r not as a function of theta then we can write d p d r is equal to rho omega square r d r. Well, so we can write this by taking rho here that integration of del p by rho or we can write this del p by rho 1 upon rho here is equal to integration of omega square r d r. If we integrate from 1 to 2, where 1 is a point at initial point, 2 is the final point. That means, if the particle moves from the mass moves from a location 1 to 2, that means, inlet to outlet, this can be written as omega square r 2 square minus r 1 square by 2. So, therefore, you see we can write now d p considering p as a function of the radial location only for your understanding this is u 2 square minus u 1 square by 2. That means, this is the flow work delivered by the fluid which is u 2 square minus u 1 square by 2. You see here also this is the flow work given to the fluid I am sorry here it is delivered by the fluid u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2 g that is per unit weight. So, from here you get a concept that the flow work that means that is the change in the pressure that if you integrate for an incompressible flow it will be given p 2 minus p 1 by rho is equal to u 2 square minus u 1 square by 2. Okay. That means, one can write that p 1 minus p 2 by 2 is equal to u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2. So, therefore, it is clearly seen that since u 2 let us consider an incompressible flow this will easy to it is easy to understand if u 2 if u 1 is the inlet and u 2 is the outlet. So, if u 2 is at a higher radial location then u 2 is more than u 1. So, therefore, this is negative. So, p 1 minus p 2 will be negative that means, p 2 will be higher than p 1. So, if u 2 is at the higher radial location, but u 2 is the lower radial location then u 2 will be lower that is 2 is at a lower radial location u 2 will be lower than u 1 then it is positive then p 1 minus p 2 is positive and in that case p 1 is higher than p 2 there will be reduction in the pressure. So, therefore, we see that this term u 1 square minus u 2 square represents a static as we already shown earlier in this that this represents a change in the pressure or static head. Similarly, is there for the relative velocity. Again, I write it to explain you after this understanding that I show you that finally, what we get h is equal to e by m is equal to v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 plus u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2 plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square by 2. Now, let us understand first then how this term is the change in the pressure this term is the change in dynamic head change in dynamic head that is energy per unit mass this time this term is the change in static head change in static head and here we have understood this that for the displacement of the fluid particles from one radial location 1 to another radial location 1 there is a change in the static head. Similarly, if there is a change in the relative velocity, there will be also a change in the pressure. This is very simple to understand that if we consider the entire rotor is fixed, that means you give a opposite direction rotation that make the rotor fixed. Then the fluid will pass through the blade passages with a velocity which is nothing but the relative velocity. 
So, its change will take place provided the cross sectional area of flow passage changes and with that change the flow velocity will change and the change in the flow velocity will be directly related to the change in pressure. Simple Bernoulli's equation if you discard the viscous effects it will give simply the delta p by rho is equal to the difference between the square of the velocity v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2. So, therefore, the change in the velocity with respect to the rotor when the rotor is fixed which depends only in the cross sectional area of the rotor passage will indicate or imply a change in the static pressure. So, this way you see this is the change in the static head or pressure head. So, therefore, this is clear now for turbines where h is positive h positive that means h greater than 0 by convention that means the energy is delivered by the fluid and if we have the individual components all to be additive then what will happen v 1 is always greater than v 2. So, in turbines the inlet velocity of the fluid is always greater than that of the outlet velocity u 1 has to be greater than u 2 that means inlet radial position if it is a radial flow machines that means if the flow takes place in bulk in the radial direction then the inlet radial location has to be at a higher the inlet to the blade is to be at a higher radial location than the outlet and v r 2 minus v r 1 has to be positive that means v r 2 has to be greater than v r 1 that means the outlet relative velocity has to be greater than the inlet relative velocity. Okay. So, outlet relative velocity greater means that the cross sectional passenger of the blade in the direction of the flow has to be the convergent one. So, has to be the convergent cross sectional passages has to be convergent. So, all these three are maintained in case of turbine. So, that we get additive effect all the individual terms are positive and they are added and the give the things that the energy delivered by the fluid. While in pumps compressors the energy is absorbed by the fluid that means energy is taken by the fluid by convention this is negative in that case V 1 will be greater than not less than v 2 that means inlet velocity is higher than the outlet velocity and u 1 is less than u 2 that means the inlet will be at a lower radial location than the outlet. So, that u 1 is less than u 2 and v r 2 is less than v r 1 that means the outlet radial outlet velocity relative velocity of the fluid will be less than the inlet relative velocity that means the flow passages will be diffuse diverging on the flow passages will be diverging on so that the outlet velocity relative to the fluid will be less than that at the inlet so that all the terms will be negative and will be additive in nature so that we get the total energy gained by the fluid so this way we can understand the different components of this energy interactions as the change in dynamic head and change in static head. Okay. Thank you.